So later today, as we've been telling you, George Floyd will be laid to rest. Um, his death sparked a nationwide a movement uh, calling for racial equality and an end to police brutality. So yesterday, the Democrats released their list, uh, list of demands, police reforms, if you will, in a bill. Um, and um, it was extensive. So we want to bring in CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes to talk a little bit more about this. Um, yesterday, uh, just less than 24 hours ago, we saw what the Democrats are hoping to achieve. Have we received any sort of response from Republicans in regards to this wide sweeping bill? Uh, Anne-Marie, reluctantly, uh, Republicans stayed silent. They didn't want to attack this bill. They realized that this is a very fraught issue. So we didn't hear from many Republicans who sort of flat out panned the bill. What we did start to hear, and what was very interesting, is Republicans telling us that they, too, are working on their own police reform legislation and that they want to release it soon. We heard that from Republicans in the House and in the Senate. In fact, Mitt Romney of Utah, interestingly, was one of the few Republicans who did go on record criticizing this Democratic bill. He pointed out that it didn't have any Republican co-sponsors. He said he is working with a small group of Republicans on uh, what he feels are bipartisan police reforms, because there is, uh, it, it increasingly appears, some overlap on things that Democrats and Republicans are willing to do. So what'll be interesting to see is once once we do get our first look at some of this Republican legislation, and some Republicans say they want to release it by the end of the week, we can look for those areas of overlap and start to get a better sense of how this might all play out. Yeah, um, Nancy, I note that uh, although you didn't get a lot of uh, lawmakers on the record talking about this, uh, the GNC has tweeted and the president of the United States has retweeted a uh, reaction uh, to what the Democrats are doing, including one that says Democrats have taken up a radical plan to push to rather defund community police forces, which would put the safety and security of all Americans at risk. Retweet if you agree. The president retweeted. Um, so let me ask you about this. Congresswoman Karen Bass, who is the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, appeared on CBS this morning earlier, and she addressed the calls from some to defund or to shift money from police departments. Let me play a little bit of that. Now, you hear police officers complain all the time. I'm a police officer. I'm not a social worker. Why should I be doing this? Well, that's exactly right. So maybe there needs to be more resources put into communities versus increasing police department budgets. So defunding the police yeah, department, a eliminating police departments, absolutely not. And Nancy, you also spoke with Congresswoman Bass yesterday. What more did she tell you about uh, the plans or the suggestion, policy perhaps, that they intend to implement that diverts funds from the police and uh, provides funds to other services for communities? Well, she made it very clear in our interview that she does not support defunding police. Uh, we have heard very few Democratic lawmakers say that they do support defunding the police. But she said that she does understand the sentiment, the frustration from activists, that there always seems to be money for the military or for the police, but not for the communities. So she says uh, that she understands where that frustration is coming from. Uh, she made very clear both in her announcement and in our interview, that her bill doesn't increase funding for police departments. So she's aware that there's a sensitivity out there among, uh, among liberals on this issue. So the bill does not add funding. Um, and, and in some ways, critics will say that in and of itself is a problem because the bill does ask a lot more of police departments than they currently uh, are being asked to do. And it also would limit, uh, for example, military equipment being given to local police departments. So um, you could make the argument that the bill in some ways will cause a strain for police departments, uh, which is akin to uh, reducing funding. Um, but, you know, this is a this is a sort of a tightrope that Democrats are, are walking right now. But to claim that they are all in support of defunding police departments is a wild exaggeration. So we, we did hear from one Republican, um, Senator Mitt Romney. He criticized the bill. He said it, he called it a message piece, uh, I suppose, essentially meaning that, yeah, it sounds good, right. but, you know, is it realistic? Is it going to happen? But, you know, 
thanks for the message that you're sending. Um, he says he's working with uh, Tim Scott, fellow Republican. Right. Do we know what the GOP uh, response bill could look like or what Mitt Romney's talking about? We have some ideas because Tim Scott, who you mentioned of South Carolina, has introduced a bill in the past and never went anywhere that would require states to report every police shooting. Um, and so that's one area of potential agreement. Uh, one, one item that might be in a Republican bill is similar to the Democratic legislation requiring some kind of national registry for uh, police misconduct so that, uh, for example, if a police officer was fired in one jurisdiction for misconduct, he or she wouldn't then be able to get a job in some other jurisdiction because that information would be out there for all police departments to see. So that's one uh, potential area of agreement. Uh, lynching, making lynching a federal cr crime. Uh, there's widespread agreement among Democrats and Republicans about that. That seems like a an easy add. Banning chokeholds, likewise. Uh, this is something that is already banned in many states, uh, and, and you can see some consensus emerging around that as well. So uh, there is potential for bipartisan agreement here. The question is, uh, how does it work? Will uh, Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Senate, who's been pretty noncommittal up to this point, allow legislation like that to come to the Senate floor for a vote uh, when he's been reluctant to do so in the past? And Nancy, of course, this all comes as we are still in the middle of a pandemic and an economic crisis. As you know, yesterday, a nonprofit economic group declared the U.S. officially entered a recession in February. This also comes about one month after Federal Reserve, Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said Congress needed to spend more money immediately. And the Democrats' latest economic relief bill has largely been ignored in the Senate. So is there any motivation, I guess, to pass new legislation in the near future? Well, a member of Senate Republican leadership, John Thune, told reporters yesterday that uh, he's sort of looking at the July time frame for serious negotiations to get underway between Republicans and Democrats over the next rescue bill. Uh, his position, the position of other Republican leaders, has been that the economy does appear to be getting back on its feet, that they don't want to rush uh, this next bill, they want to see what the areas of need are. They want to see how state and local governments use the money that they got so far before they jump uh, headfirst into another expensive bill. And that still appears to be their stance, despite this new, uh, um, uh, you know, analysis by some that the U.S. might be heading, might be already in a recession. Um, but they say those talks have already begun, um, sort of uh, uh, casual talks between Democrats and Republicans about what might make it in to the next uh, negotiated bill. But he says that uh, we shouldn't expect to see any kind of final product until July at the earliest. All right, Nancy Kors for us in Washington. As always, Nancy, we thank you. You're welcome.